All right, President Joe Biden released a video calling out President Donald Trump for a debate. That video had five cuts in 14 seconds. I think we know why. You want to see it? Here it is. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Yeah. He just had to remind the public that he is prosecuting his political rival, too. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. President Trump agreed to the challenge, saying on True Social, uh, True Social that is, uh, I am ready and willing to debate Crooked Joe at the two proposed times in June and September. I think it's June 27, September 10. I would strongly recommend more than two debates and, for excitement purposes, a very large venue, although Joe is supposedly afraid of crowds. That's only because he doesn't get them. Just tell me when I'll be there. Let's get ready to rumble. So, what can we expect? Want me to talk about it? Congressman from Montana's 2nd Congressional District, Matt Rosendale. Matt, nice to have you here. Always good to be on, Steve. All right, so there, there, are, there are more restrictions, though. First of all, it's two. It's been three debates for years and years. Now, I do like the fact that one of these happens at the end of June and one at the beginning of September. It's before anybody gets a chance to vote in this country, even in the places where mass mail-in ballots are encouraged several weeks in advance. So... Good thing here, but no audience. I mean, the list of rules that came with the Biden campaign, no audience, no RFK Jr. or anybody else in the room, uh, limited news outlets. Joe Biden got to pick. I guess the first one's going to be on CNN. And the candidates' mics must be turned off as soon as their time expires so that Donald Trump can't interject and correct all the lies that will well, come from Joe Biden, now. I guess. It, it may not be uh, in concern for uh, President Trump inter. Uh, interfering with what uh, President Biden says, it could be so that they don't hear President Biden mumbling when he's not actually answering a question. Fair point. Uh, you know, fair point. He could be over there having conversations with himself about Uncle Bozy and the barbecue in the South Pacific. I don't know. Maybe it's a possibility. Uh, yeah. Look, I think Donald Trump is right to take the debates. I don't think it makes any difference. They said, well, we want to go back to the 1960s. And the solid debate, which is two candidates and a television studio and a moderator. Now, Donald Trump let them pick everything, everything. They get to pick the moderator. They get to pick the network. They get to pick the format. They get to pick the fact that there's no audience and they get to cut the mics. Right. So everything's in Joe Biden's favor here, except, well, for Joe Biden. Except it's, it's still, still Joe him. Biden, Steve, except it's still Joe Biden. Now, I, you know, I don't like the idea that we're going to have CNN and CBS um, holding these debates, and who knows who the moderator is going to be? I, I, I vote for a Steve Grubber, okay, to get you out there. How about how about we get Grant Grant Stinchfield? Let him let him go ahead and moderate one of these things. That would be a little bit more fair, as far as I'm concerned. But the fact of the matter is, how in the world is Joe Biden going to perform without a coach standing right next to him or? a uh, teleprompter in front of him. Uh, this could be a very embarrassing situation for him and his campaign. And, and the fact of the matter is, it could be dangerous for our country because if the world leaders see him stand up on stage and trying to debate uh, President Trump, and, and we have watched him fumble through short speeches. We have watched him fumble to try and get up on stage and then try and figure out which part of the stage he is supposed to exit on to. Um, it could put us in a, a dangerous situation. Well, it certainly could. And, and look, the only thing they have, the, the latest thing they're doing out there, you probably caught this. I don't want to bring this to people's attention because the inflation numbers were released today, 3.4% still uh, well above that 2% mark they're trying to get to, right? So inflation is still out of control. Since Joe Biden took office, uh, food is up 30%, gas is up 50%, costing people $1,200 more per month to live, $15,000 a year it's costing people, right? And, and Joe Biden is, is out tax, there. That is a tax on the, the everyday working person. But Joe Biden, day. hold on. He's out there telling people, well, he came in office, inflation was 9%, and they're letting him get away with this. Some people are. Inflation was 1.4% when Joe Biden first fell asleep in the Oval Office. Now it went to 9%. It's back to a three and a half. But they keep spreading these lies. And for people to get their information from TikTok, that's dangerous.
It is. Oh, but where they should be getting their information from is when they go to the grocery store and they buy a bag of groceries and what used to uh, cost $100 to fill up two or three bags, now they're going to fill up one bag of groceries. That you, you can't lie about that, Steve. You just can't. And so when people ask me, how long can we continue to pile this debt up? How long can we continue to grow government? I say, well, you know, until people take a bag of, of money to the store in order to get a bag of groceries, and when they won't tolerate it any longer, that's when they're going to do something about changing the administration and stop allowing the uniparty, quite frankly, this, this big group of Republicans and Democrats here in Washington, D.C., continue to spend their way into oblivion. Absolutely, absolutely true. You, and again, I go back to these numbers. A food up 30 percent plus since Joe Biden took office. If you go out to eat, it's 35 percent. I mean, you go out to eat, it's just genre. I talk to people about this. You take a family of four to the drive through at McDonald's, it's a 40 or $50 event. Absolutely. Uh, McDonald's, value exactly. is 40 or 50 bucks. So we still see the inflation rates going up, and we know it's a direct result of two things. Number one, the cost of energy, because that touches every single product across our nation. And the other thing is the $3 trillion a year that the government is spending beyond what it actually collects in revenue. So that com a continued compiling of the debt on the American people. And yet, I hear today, I was listening to the financial channels, they're talking about a possible... Uh, interest rate reduction in September. Why would that be, Steve? Well, how in the world can you Politics. justify, if you're truly trying to make sure that we have sound money, how could you justify reducing the interest rate in September only to give a benefit to this failing, failing administration that Joe Biden leads? Yeah, yeah, politics. Energy prices, absolutely. You know, I had people write down in January 20, 2021 what things cost in this country. And I've got it posted on my wall here. 229 was a gallon of gas. It's now 360 where I am. That's up a dollar to 31 a gallon. That's better than 50%. The mortgage rates were at 2.25% for a 30 year fixed mortgage. Now it's three times that high. I mean, it's killing people. And the cost of rent is out of control. The cost of doing everything is out of control. I'll give you the last word. It is. It is. And this administration, what I have found is that if they can't uh, make the changes that they want to, to transition us to this new green uh, world that they're trying to believe in, a uh, new green economy, they even call it, uh, what they will do is use rules. And they use rules in each and every one of these agencies. Uh, today, it was blatantly displayed through the uh, Department of Interior and the BLM and the public lands, how they're shutting down the, the uh, wise use of our, of our resources there. And so if they can't do it by law, they're doing it by rule, and, and we have to start fighting back. We have to start fighting back really hard. And, and people across the nation uh, just can't consent. Congressman, I 100% agree with you. And the Western states get taken advantage of far more when it comes to access to lands, federal and state lands, than anybody else. Matt, thank you for being here. Always good to be with you, my friend. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.